This is the Harley Davidson Lowrider S. Let's review it. Is this Lowrider S a cult classic? Now, what I mean by that is, as you can see, it's very classically Harley Davidson, but there is some modern tech and modern features included, but not too much. Have Harley Davidson basically made this bike to stylistically and categorically be a classic Harley Davidson, but then thrown in a few of the extra bits that a Harley rider will love to enjoy, like the engine, like the exhaust note. In my mind, Harley Davidson have made this bike a fantastic option for someone who, yes, has a lot of money, and yes, is gonna be willing to lug a heavy bike around, but then have that analog experience and that raw connection with the bike that a lot of owners will just love to have. So in terms of modern features on this bike, it's quite simple. You've got a analog display, you've got LCD information on there, like the speed, the fuel gauge, which is always nice, the range remaining, your trip, your time. That's all there and accessed by a little button on the dash. Everything's nice and simple on this bike, but it still has that modern edge. I mean, you've got a keyless ignition system, which is really nice to have on a bike. And it means that you can just jump off the bike, run into the shop, it will lock up. Then you come back, press ignition switch, find the key because you have to be near the bike. Otherwise it starts having a little bit of a LED party in the indicators. And then you jump on, fire it up and away you go. It's really nice and raw and simple. There's no rider modes. It's literally just on or off. You do have traction control, which you can turn off, which is a nice modern feature, especially on a big bike like this. But you also have ABS. And of course, that's a pretty crucial feature on any bike, but especially this, which again, big and heavy. But is this bike a little bit too expensive for a future prospect Harley owner who wants to buy this brand new? The base price for the bike is £19,735. With the little extra bits that Harley have thrown in here, I mean the Jekyll and Hyde exhaust, again worth talking about endlessly, the crash bar, got the grips, pretty sure these mirrors are different as well. Those are all things that the price really does increase. Now, specced up, this is about £24,000 as it is in front of us here. But for that, is it worth the money? I mean, you get that raw experience with the bike and from there, you get that Harley owner experience, which is what a lot of people love and just would do anything for. Fired up every single time, first time, and I've only got a little bit of fuel. Let's ride out. This is gonna do a little bit of a, a run on this so you can see what it's like on board. Open up the valve. Instantly such a different engine note, and it's just beautiful. In fact, when you start it without opening the valve, it doesn't sound quite as, as normal. But with the valve open, it's super loud. And as you can see, it's a pretty aggressive riding position. Your legs are mid-mount foot controls, but they are often in front of you. Your arms are in this aggressive stance. And the engine, this Milwaukee 8117, is just an absolute beast. It's a 1923cc V-twin. It's got about 168 newton meters of torque and around 105 brake horsepower. And the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde exhaust, when that's fully open, I'm just going to spin around here. When that exhaust is fully open, they say it gives you about a 5% increase in power they say, and despite the noise, and despite the noise, it is road legal, which is very nice. So as you can see here, it picks up speed really nicely. And I'm only floating in third gear. I can't really legally go any further on camera, but it just sits here so stable and calm. The suspension stays, or keeps you in the same position. And despite having to really count the steer and push your, your opposite bar when you want to turn, or your inside bar when you want to turn left, for example, on your left. Once you get the hang of muscling it around, 
it really is easy to use. It's just that addictive noise, it's just so beautiful. The clutch is really, really light. And that means that despite the bike being huge and heavy, when you're doing low speed maneuvers, you don't have to worry about your hand hurting on your clutch arm because uh, it's super light. I've also found the gearbox on this Harley to be very, very good indeed. It just slips into gear every time. And when you match your downshifts, of course, naturally it sounds good. But it just feels like the gearbox just clicks into place just perfectly. How much range have I got? Let's have a look. Not the end. Fuel lights just come on. And it's come on at 38 miles of range. It's an 18.9 litre tank as well. And when you ride sensibly, you'd probably get about 200 miles out of it. But if you do those addicting low rev pulls, you'll be lucky to get 100. <laughs> it just depends how you ride it. And of course, it's a solo cruiser, heavyweight cruiser. You're not really gonna be worrying about touring on this because you'd go for the ST model instead. With the big fairing. And as you can see, it's just nice and simple to ride this calmly. You know, you don't have to really worry about it at all. Despite when you're doing low speed bits, you, especially at first, you're quite naturally careful about where you're putting your body and what weight you're putting down. Because uh, it could quite easily go wrong. Yeah, I've got this 400 pound crash bar over here. That's a genuine accessory from the Harley catalog about 400 pounds and when you first ride and you do feel like you're going to start taking some poor driver's car door off if you're uh, a little bit too close when you're filtering along but the amount of looks that you get on this bike when you're taking it nice and steady rolling back eh? a learner I could I could slot down there but I just don't want to freak out the learner with my uh, raucous exhaust one learner. So yeah, the suspension's good on this bike. It's got self-cancelling indicators as well, which is quite nice. And the indicators, of course, on the left and the right of the bar. You've got switchable traction control. And the cruise control button here looks like the indicator switch. So when I was first here, I was, without even thinking, I was like, wait, it's not indicator. Oh, it's because it's the cruise control button. So be aware of that. I mean, the suspension on this bike is superb as well. It's got a rear hidden monoshock, so despite it, its classic looks and hardtail appearance, the rear suspension is superb, to be fair, especially considering the rolling weight with me, my kit, full tank, it's probably going to be looking at about, well, well over 400 kilograms. So the suspension does a really good job, 43mm upside down forks on the front, really give you a lot of feel in the corners. Side sand is an interesting one on this as well because um, it doesn't really do what you'd expect it to do. It's a bit spring loaded, so you sort of feel the weight of the bike come underneath as the, uh, the side stand pushes out. It's secure and it's fine on it, but it's just a bit <laughs> unsettling when you first put the bike on the side stand. You feel all of that weight start to tip as the side stand just keeps on going up under before it actually kicks into place and finds its correct lean angle. But I'm going to fill up now, so take it easy, low rider S. So a quick word as well, subscribe to Bike Matters to stay up to date with all of our antics and bikes and reviews and top tens and all of our fun. 
And also, big shout out to Lexham Insurance who power Bike Matters. If you're looking for a motorcycle scooter insurance quote, you can head online directly to lexhaminsurance.co.uk or you can give them a call and you can get a quote for a renewal or for your Harley Davidson. Give them a try and see what they can offer. So moving towards the display and the instruments that you got here, it's very simple. It's classic Harley Davidson really. They're not trying to be too flash. I mean, you can look at like the Sportster S for the full TFT display. Check out that review in the top right if you haven't already seen it. Good bike. But yeah, you've got the instrument cluster here and you've got literally the ignition switch. Switch that on, the bike will look for the key wherever it is, it's in my pocket at the moment. So fire it on that as well. LED lights back and forward as well, which is always nice. And everything on this display is simple. You've got your range and you toggle through with the button on the left handlebar. You've got trip A, trip B, your revs if you want to see how much revs, but there is an analog dial at the top. Your speed is directly in the middle. You've got the fuel tank gauge. And other than that, it's just basic, it's simple. There's no rider modes, there's nothing to worry about. And of course, other than that, you literally have nothing else. You've got your hazards here, the ignition. You've got the lights and that's it. So it's nice and simple, it's nice and classic. I quite like that. That makes me think that Harley Davidson are just doing what they know and have done best, which is just make classic bikes that people enjoy. So let's continue talking about the road handling. Brakes, suspension, wheels. You've got an upside down 43 mil suspension at the front and you do have a hidden rear monoshock. So it looks like a bit of a hardtail, but it is that monoshock that's under there. And on the road, considering that the bike is pretty substantially heavy and with me on, I think it's about 400 kilograms or something like that when it's all rolling, me and the bike included, the suspension does a really good job. The rear feels nice and secure and firm. Mid corner, it's absolutely fine. The feedback through the bar, of course you have to push the bar quite heavily to counter steer into a lot of corners. But once you muscle the bike in, it feels nice and planted and firm and solid around corners. Of course, down some of the country lanes, you just take it a bit easier and know that the brakes, which twin disc at the front and a big old disc at the rear, you've got to really engage those brakes to slow the bike down. But when you do that, the braking is really nice. I mean, quick mention, the clutch is nice and light as well. Riding this bike, once you get into the mindset of muscling the bike around and really pushing it in and riding aggressively as you would a Harley, it really has a lot of good feedback. So moving to the tires, you've got a big 19 inch front wheel, got a rear 16 inch wheel, fat, fat wheel. Not as big as a Sportster S, but nice and big on the road. You've got the Michelin Scorchers as the tread, and it is for Harley Davidson, they're branded as Harley wheels. Very nice, good control. I mean, we've been blessed with really nice weather. I hadn't had to ride this bike in the wet at all, so I can't give you a wet weather review, but when it's perfect conditions like this, no complaints about the tires whatsoever. Really good feedback, and ultimately, the suspension, the brakes, the aggressive handling, and the tires, they all come together to make what is actually a really well handling and easy to ride bike. Once you get over the fact you have to be quite aggressive on the bars and muscle the bike around, but that's quite fun as well. Ultimately, I think that Harley Davidson have smashed it with this bike. And I think this is exactly what Harley Davidson do best, is make a bike that is just raw and connected to you as the rider. Of course, it's got a few of the modern touches, you know, your keyless ignition, stuff like that, that's quite nice to have, but it doesn't try and overcomplicate things. Now, naturally, there is some pros and cons, and I'll touch on those in a moment, but I think this is what Harley Davidson do best, is make bikes that are just full of character. I mean, the engine, the way it handles, the riding position, it's all classic Harley Davidson. And does that make it a cult classic? I think this world could be. So, pros and cons of this bike, the pro, I mean, it's not Harley thing, but the exhaust, the engine note, the character from that engine is just fantastic. Second pro, the fact that it is just raw, it's just raw fun and there's no rider modes. That's a, a big thing for me. Like you jump on the bike and you don't have to think, right, I'm gonna put it into sports mode and then I'm gonna turn this down, I'm gonna turn this. Up. You just jump on the bike, switch it on and off you go. So the raw feeling of the bike itself is bang on. And the third positive for me is the handling on the road. It's that aggressive style but it just holds lines really well. The engine, when you get to a certain peak torque level and you're matching the revs on downshifts and doing all of that, just the handling and the way this bike is on the road is a big positive for me. In terms of negatives, there's a few. I mean, the price, this one here is just shy of 24,000 pounds. That's really expensive for a bike that is ultimately quite raw and you know, I, I was using that as a positive, but if the price was a little bit lower, I think this bike could be amazing. But at the same time, it's a brand new Harley, and if you've got the money for it, fair play. 
So con number one is the price. Con number two, it is seriously heavy and I'm not really sure why. Of course the motor is there and that's heavy, the frame and all of the components are heavy, but it's just excessively heavy. If it was like maybe 30 kilograms less, it would be just a little bit softer on the foot. But you know, that's, that is what it is. And my third negative, unfortunately, Shoba did burn his leg on the exhaust. The exhaust itself gets very hot and the riding position here like is fine for me, but if you've got shorter legs, this might bang into you. You've got to be very mindful of the fact that the exhaust is there and very hot. And you just got to be aware of the, uh, the heat because otherwise you'll get branded by the Harley Davidson and you'll forever be a part of it. <laughs> so this has been the Harley Davidson Lowrider S. Love this bike, really good fun. Would I own it? Maybe, probably not. I prefer my Speed 2 and 1200. Anyway, lovely bike, really good fun. Appreciate you watching this far through the video. Subscribe to Bike Matters to see all of our latest updates. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.